The latest additions to the Legend of Zelda franchise are not without controversy. Sure, Breath of the Wild reinvigorated a 20-year-old formula by throwing most of it out of the window. Its successor, Tears of the Kingdom, by doubling down on a lot of Breath of the Wild's changes, had people legitimately asking, So, are the Era of the Wild games Zelda games? In the last video, I laid out what I think are the defining elements of a Zelda game. For those of you suffering from blunt force trauma and can't recall what we discussed, here's the TLDR. Let's see how gameplay stacks up. The first bit of this is undoubtedly true of the era of the Wilds games. There are video essays, monuments, imperial provinces named in honor of the freedom and sense of discovery within these games. But most of that exploration ends in Korok seeds, items from other games, or shrines. As this astute Redditor so keenly notes, most of the game is exploration. And regardless of whether or not you liked the Divine Beasts, although admittedly being able to rearrange them was a clever gimmick, they fall woefully short of what is expected of a puzzle box dungeon. Tears of the Kingdom's dungeons are not much different, just covered in a superficial veneer that makes it seem like they're unique, but at their core, they all fit the Activate 5 Terminals bill, hardly an intricate dungeon. And anyone who prefers shrines needs to be psychologically evaluated by a professional. We'll give this half a check because the front end of this element was so developed, much to the detriment of the latter end. Next, this requires little thought. Climbing, the Sheikah Slate abilities, and Raru's arm abilities, you can traverse Hyrule in almost any way you can imagine. These are innovative mechanics that make the world more interesting to explore. The puzzle solving suffers though, as the necessary tools are at your disposal, basically at the game's beginning. Even still, this gets a fat green check. The real sticking point here is there are definitely too many items. Zelda, which usually sets the standard, seems to be borrowing from the survival crafting genre a bit too greedily. Where it counts with armor and weapons, there's the illusion of too many weapons, none of which are all that memorable. And in the case of Tears of the Kingdom's Fuse, janky as hell looking. But beyond the Master Sword, even that's got issues, there isn't any weapon that calls back to other games in a non-superficial way. And the Zora armor is the only reimagined armor set that serves any exploratory purpose. Red X here. The story is where we get to the meat of things. Here's the issue with modern Zelda. There is no hero's journey. This is structurally true in that once Link receives the game's powers on the tutorial island or plateau, he's all he'll ever be. He has the means to solve every puzzle, overcome every traversal challenge, and anything beyond that he can find lying about. This is also narratively true in that once the tutorial is complete, you can fight the final boss. There is no reason to have a journey. Nintendo has made the heart of becoming a hero both front-loaded and effectively optional. And if one does choose to make their way through the world, they are now removed from the story. Everything is witnessed secondhand. Their link has been severed. Big L. There is certainly more to Breath of the Wild than Tears of the Kingdom. Breath of the Wild had an interesting idea, an amnesia link recalling the fate of Hyrule through memories. And maybe within that there is a theme of failure or overcoming your past, it's just that the story through the memories is, well, better. The themes would have hit harder if we had got to see that failure firsthand. As far as Tears of the Kingdom, I've detailed this before, but the Zelda team says the game's theme is connections. But in a narrative sense, they aren't there. There are no connections. The world has strange incongruities, memories of NPCs don't even connect to the first game. Even taken as a standalone game, the themes contradict. A case could be made for sacrificing the past for the sake of the future, but the ending undermines that. To be honest, I don't know what the themes of Tears of the Kingdom are. There's no nuance, no maturity, and the supposed themes are dissonant compared to what the developers intended. Things ain't looking good. And finally, Breath of the Wild was a gold mine for lore. It spawned more channels in more ways than Todd McFarlane spawned, well, uh, spawn. Theorists ran amok, and we couldn't wait for what Nintendo billed as the sequel to Breath of the Wild. What eventually became Tears of the Kingdom was fertile ground to further explore this lore. 
Remember two things. We were told Tears of the Kingdom was a sequel, and Nintendo made the creative decision to reuse Hyrule. And then they ignored everything that came before. And the Zonai were awkwardly and uninterestingly inserted into the history of the entire franchise. This was their opportunity to enhance the world they created in deep and meaningful ways. And instead they added to it superficially, cheapening both games. Ratatoskr was right. They don't care. <laughs> I don't want to give the impression that any Zelda game can be reduced to a mere checklist, even though that's exactly what I've just done. In doing so, my intention was to point out that one and a half of the two foundational aspects of the Zelda franchise have been seriously neglected in the era of the wild. Exploration has usurped the throne and left puzzle box dungeons out in the cold. The design team boiled this down to nostalgia instead of understanding that this gameplay element persisted because it was good. Instead of exploring new iterations faithful to these traditional dungeons, Nintendo has opted to fill this Hyrule with set pieces and items that serve no purpose other than to be recognized. From a narrative perspective, the player doesn't get to engage with the story on any meaningful level. Nintendo has given carte blanche to the Minecraft generation and a handful of speedrunners within this sandbox. To great financial success, I might add, but at the cost of the franchise's narrative lifeblood. Without the sense of progression through a hero's journey, feeling like we are challenged or have triumphed, we start to question, is this a Zelda game? Nintendo has crafted this era of the wild so that everyone can have their own experience. But so few are having an impactful one. Bye bye! It's a maybe.